Hi, my name is Dr. Sonia Malik and I am the chairman of a facility called South End Fertility and IVF. We have been doing this business of IVF for the last many years. I would say I started my practice in this, in this speciality of uh, gynae and obstetrics in the year 1995 and I set up this first unit of mine in 2001. And ever since then, it has been a long journey of about 25, 26 years. I've been doing infertility and IVF over, the, over these years. And uh, it has given me a great opportunity to come across patients from different countries, leave alone my own, not just Indians, but patients from other countries, other nationalities. And it's a wonderful experience to share uh, what kind of uh, experiences we've had, it's beautiful experiences, I would say with people coming to us from other countries. Ever since the um, country has, uh, India as a country has become a medical tourism hub of which we are very proud. And uh, we have seen that we have lots of new patients, lots of new people, couples coming in to fulfill their dreams. Not only people from other nationalities, but our own Indians as well, the NRIs who have settled abroad for a long time, first generation, second generation, they have been coming to us with various problems to have a child. And uh, I, my, my tagline I would say or my favorite sub, uh, line or, or word that I would like to tell people is that you know nobody comes to us for a disease, they all come to us for a desire. So it's a beautiful feeling if you can fulfill the desire of couples who are wanting to have a child or have complete their families. Interestingly, we've had couples coming to us who have had their first pregnancies with us through IVF and then after a couple of years they've come for their second one as well. So it gives us a feeling of great satisfaction and, and uh, a great elation to see that we are completing the families of, of people whom we have never known ever. They've come to us from distant lands, stayed with us, become our partners and had a beautiful experience of having pregnancies with us. So that has been the journey of IVF with, with uh, various kinds of people across. And then let me tell you a little bit about infertility. Over the years when we started off infertility in the country, it was restricted to only the infertile couples. That means people who were having a problem and they couldn't conceive. But now infertility is extended to gender people. Anybody, uh, sorry, IVF is extended to uh, uh, the population at large. We have patients not just infertile, other than infertility also coming for up to us for IVF. Let me explain to you how. First of all, the classical IVF. Classical IVF is essentially when a person either has blocked tubes, which was the first test tube baby many years ago, a mother had blocked tubes, and then you have male factor infertility. These are actually absolute indications for an IVF, male factor infertility and blocked tubes. But other than that, if there are ovulation problems, if there is unexplained infertility, diseases like polycystic ovarian disease or endometriosis, patients can have IVF as a, as a part of treatment. But now, recently what has happened is IVF has opened to couples other than infertile couples, for instance, social egg freezing. You all know across the world this is a phenomena, women are actually leading in various spheres of life. They are doing very well in their jobs, they are doing very well in their careers and hence they find very little time to start a family, to begin a family. So the concept of social egg freezing has really caught on and uh, all of us here, in, especially in my facility, we are, we are actually doing this kind of a thing. We do egg freezing for women who are not yet ready to have a child and would want to postpone their pregnancies for a couple of years. So we do encourage women under 35 who are not yet willing to start a family to come and freeze their eggs with us and then utilize them whenever they want to with whoever is going to be their partner. That is one aspect. And then we have a huge program of egg freezing running also for cancer patients. We all know that the survival rate of cancer has become much, much better over the years. And you have younger girls now coming in with diseases like breast cancer. So we do have methods wherein we freeze the eggs or even the ovaries of these women and keep them with us till the time they are absolutely treated for their cancers and are ready to have their own child. So that kind of a facility is also available with us and we are doing egg freezing, oocyte freezing as well as sperm freezing for male cancers as well. 
So fertility preservation is a very big thing and we are very proud to say that we are doing a very very good job of it. Many of our male patients have also conceived with the frozen, frozen sperms that have been lying with us for a long time. Then of course, so therefore these people are essentially not infertile but for certain reasons they are, they are having to, uh, to use the, uh, the treatment of IVF for their own, for their benefit. Then of course for male infertility as you, as you all know that now what is happening is because of the environmental pollution, because of the problems that are happening and the lifestyle of men, we are finding that male infertility is, is also rising. And so for the male, very very severely affected male, you have condition, we can extract the sperm from the testes. There may not be any ejaculated sperm in the semen and we can extract the sperm from the testes. So testicular extraction microscopically can also be done and that sperm can be used for doing an IVF. These are new indications for doing IVF. Then of course in the female, you have so many women who are aging fast. Just as I said, social egg freezing is a very big uh, program but women who are not aware of it and they do come to us at a, at a older age, say 36, 38, 39, 40s even, for, the, uh, for having a child of their own. We have methods to help them have child of their own by various methods that we prescribe to them depending upon the condition of their, of their bodies. So all that, plus of course India as you all know, is, we are very proud to say, is a very good hub for surgical practice as well. So endoscopic surgery, laparoscopic surgery is extremely, extremely good in this country. And we are very proud to say that as, a, as, a, uh, as one of the centers who is practicing infertility in the country, we are also offering endoscopic surgeries for patients who require fibroid removal, who require uh, other conditions of their uterus where their uterus is not functioning properly, or their tubes are damaged and they want to get it repaired, they don't want to go in yet for an IVF. We have those facilities as well. So there is a complete package for infertility services with us. We, we would like to welcome you to our facility and we would want you to come and try us and see how we can be of help to you. Many a times, many of our patients go back with very simple procedures because we are not trying to sell something to you. We just want you to become our partner, enjoy the journey with us and come, go back absolutely successful with a baby in your arms. I thank you for being here with me today.